Welcome to Electro Online. Our next example looks a lot like the previous one with one difference that now in the numerator we also have an x in there. Does that change our approach? No, the approach will remain the same. We're still going to use partial fractions, but it'll look a little bit different now. So instead of writing the integral like this, we're going to write it as a sum of two integrals and we have to decide what a and b are equal to which means that x divided by the denominator must equal a over a plus bx plus b over c plus fx. So you can see I've already worked ahead a little bit because there's a lot of algebra in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the left and the right side by the common denominator, which is the product of these two, which means on the left side we get x, on the right side we get a times c plus fx plus b times a plus bx. And then we're going to multiply those out. So we can see on the left we have x equals everything here on the right side. And then we realize that these two terms are constants and these two terms are, have coefficients in front of an x there. Which means since we don't have a constant on the left side, ac plus ba must equal 0 because there's no constant here. And the coefficients of the two terms that have an x, af plus bb, must equal the constant 1 because that is equal to the coefficient in front of the x term on the left side. And then we have to solve those two simultaneously. So here we can see that a is equal to minus b a over c. Then here we're using this equation. We realize then b is equal to c divided by bc minus af. If we let k equals bc minus af, we can write b in a very simplified term. And then we can then see that a is equal to minus a over k when we plug the b in for the big B there. So now we have the two values for a and b, which means that our integrals now become the following. So this cannot be written as a is going to be minus a over k times the integral of dx divided by a plus bx. And then we have the b there. Let's see what we need to negative. That's there. We have a plus. The b is going to be c over k times the integral of dx divided by c plus fx. And then we realize we can actually integrate those using the natural log as a solution, except we need a b dx in the numerator here, and we need an f dx in the numerator there. So that means we need a b here, which means we need to divide by a b. And we need an f here, which means we need to divide by an f. Now we can go ahead and integrate those. So this becomes minus a over bk times the natural log of a plus bx. Plus, here we have c over fk times the natural log of c plus fx. And of course, our constant of integration. And for those who want to see things in a more complete format, realizing that k is equal to bc minus af, then we come back over here. So this cannot be written as minus a over b times bc minus af times the natural log of a plus bx plus c over f times, again, bc minus af times the natural log of c plus fx plus a constant of integration. So now you can see where all your constants belong as well. And that's how it's done.